Good day team. Welcome to this video on mutually exclusive versus independent events. My name's Justin and if you want to see any of my videos, you can look up zstatistics.com. This one's interesting. This one comes as uh, there's been a bit of confusion around what these two concepts mean and some people actually think they're the same thing, which they very much are not. So let's explore their differences. Diving straight in, let's have a look at mutually exclusive events. Now, for this, we're using a, an example of 100 high school students that have been surveyed. Let's just presume they've been you know, questioned on a variety of different factors facing their schooling. Event A, we're defining as a student playing basketball. And event B is a student electing to play cricket. Now, because these are both summer sports, a student can't play both of them at once. So you can see that 40 students out of 100 play basketball in this example, 25 play cricket, and 35 play neither of those two sports, summing to 100 students. Now, of course, we can find the probability of each of these two events pretty simply. 40 out of 100 for basketball, 25 out of 100 for cricket. Uh, the important thing to note is that the intersection is actually zero. So there is no possibility of playing both sports. And this symbol here means the intersection. So the probability of event A and event B happening at the same time is zero. And guess what? That is the definition of mutually exclusive. It means that a student electing to play cricket excludes the possibility of him playing basketball and vice versa. <laughs> and vice versa, not vice versa. So they're mutually exclusive. Let's have a look at independence now. So we're using the same 100 high school students here. So event A is still that a student plays basketball, but here we're saying that event B is a student studying modern history. Now you might think that studying modern history doesn't really affect the possibility of someone playing basketball, and you might be right, but we need to have a look at the numbers and that's the key to independent events. We can't assess whether these two events are independent until we actually take note of the numbers. And you'll note here that there is in fact a intersection between event A and B. So eight students out of the hundred both play basketball and study modern history. And that's important. You can't have independent events without some intersection. We'll see why that is in a little bit, in just a little bit, but for the moment, we have to realize that we're going to do some calculations here. So the question we're going to ask here is, what is the proportion of students that are playing basketball? Now, if we just look at the basketball set here, we know it's still going to be 40 over 100 because we have 32 students that play basketball without studying modern history, eight students that play basketball with studying modern history. So if you just ignore modern history altogether, you still have 40 on 100 playing basketball. Now, if we apply the condition that a student studies modern history, we can still try to assess the probability of playing basketball. So we're just looking now at event B. And within event B, it's still going to be the same ratio of students playing basketball. So eight out of 20 students play basketball within that modern history set, right? So applying the condition of studying modern history didn't affect the probability of playing basketball. So that's what I was saying. You can only assess independence, and indeed, these are independent events. You can only assess that independence through looking at the numbers. So if we're looking at the definition of independence, we can say that event A and B are independent if the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B. So I've put in brackets here, applying the condition B does not affect the probability of A, or in our case, applying the condition of this student studies modern history didn't affect their probability of playing basketball. All right, so what's an example where there is a dependence, or in other words, two events are not independent? Well, let's take event A again, the same one where a student plays basketball, and let's in Let's change event B to where a student is taller than 175 centimeters. 
Now, your gut's probably going to be telling you that there's going to be some overlap here and students that are taller than 175 centimeters are probably more likely to want to play basketball for obvious reasons, right? So, let's have a look and see if these are in fact independent events. And we can do the same thing. We can find the probability of A, which is still 0.4. The probability of A given B here, for that we're just focusing on event B. Well, there's 35 students that are taller than 175 centimeters and play basketball. And there's 50 students that are taller than 175 centimeters all up. So that conditional probability is 0.7. So we can say here that these two events are in fact not independent, or in other words, they are dependent, right? So that's good. Now here's a really interesting thing. At the very beginning of this video, I said that people sometimes confuse mutually exclusive events with independent events, and they conflate those two concepts. They think they're one and the same. But in reality, if something's mutually exclusive, they have to be very much dependent. In other words, not independent, right? Let's have a look at the example we used right at the beginning, a student playing basketball versus a student playing cricket. We know the probability of a student playing basketball is 40% or 0.4. And if I asked you, what's the probability of a student playing basketball given they play cricket? You would tell me that it's zero, right? So clearly that conditional probability is not the same as the non-conditional probability of 0.4. So that's why I said right at the beginning that when we have the independent events actually need uh, an intersection to possibly be independent. If there's no intersection, you'll have mutually exclusive events, which are the most extreme form of dependence actually. Interesting, right? I thought so. Anyway, uh, my name's Justin and all of the videos I put up on zstatistics.com. If you liked the video, you know what to do, but here's an extra little thing. If you want to donate some money to the channel via the super thanks button, I, do, I push that money on to uh, an education charity. I don't keep any of that myself. So all funds raised through the super thanks option that YouTube have made available will be sent to uh, my choice in education charity. And you can look in the description to see what charity I'm supporting uh, for this particular video. Anyway, I'll catch you next time and see you around.